Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord, our Savior. Our praise, glory belongs to him forever and ever and ever. Amen. Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. Hold one second. Glory be to God. Pastor, can you come up here and just shout hallelujah for the people who are out here in this land while I tend to something real quick? Glory, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory and honor be to God, our Father. That's I in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Yeah. Thou kingdom come. Thou will be done. Yes. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Have mercy on us and give us favor with man. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you've done and all that you're doing for each and every last one of us and our family and our children and grandchildren yes. and those who still have adult parents. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory forever and ever and ever. Kind of giving you something a little different today, but I want to welcome each and every one of you to our Spirit Side Chat. Now, I want to continue chatting with you about being Christ's nature. That is his grace. God and nature continued. You know, all of this is about the nature of God. So we are nature speakers because we believe in the nature of Christ. Who am I in Christ? Well, today we're going to talk about, we're going to chat about being his instrument of worship. And as disciples and believers, we must know what this is. So therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you giving you glory. We come before you giving you honor. We come before you magnifying and praising your name, glorifying you, lifting you up, and just shouting hallelujah to the most high, precious God. We come before you giving you thanks. Thanks for what you've already done. Thanks for what you're doing. And thanks for what you are going to do. Yeah. For as I've said, and as you have given unto us, we know how this turns out. For we know in the end we win. We are victorious and we are not victims. So we just bless you and we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you for your word that comes from on high. Father, my prayer is that not one individual will leave up under the sound of my voice or from these devices in the same manner which he or she has entered. But let there be a renewance of life, a renewal of living, one that will cause us to open up our Bibles and to become one with you in the name of Jesus. We pray this in the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ, we say amen. 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 amen and amen again. Well, we in this ministry are in the midst of celebrating our 10th year anniversary. Yeah. To God be the glory. And God has directed me to give this word to this ministry, for we are truly his instrument or his instruments of worship. Amen. Now, 10, saints, is the number of law and responsibility. Let me say that again. 10 is the number of law and responsibility. And it is also the number of testimony. You guys got that? Yeah. Not only is 10 the number of law and responsibility, it is also the number of testimony. Yeah. Whose testimony? God's testimony, because it's only God's testimony that means anything in all of existence. You guys with me on this? Yes. Therefore, in this ministry, this is the year of responsibility to retrieve law and to implement it. Let me say that again. So this is the year for this ministry to be receptive or to be responsible to retrieve the law and to implement it. Notice that I did not say to fulfill it. 
Hmm? But to perform what has already been fulfilled or to carry it out with one another. Yes. You guys with me on this? This is the year of the implementation of love. For Moses received 10 commandments hmm, and was responsible to convey them to the house of Israel. You guys with me? We are to be modern day Moseses. And it is our responsibility to receive the decree of the Lord for any decree from him is law. Amen. Let me say that again. Any decree from God is law. That means that it is law because God does not set forth his law without love. In fact, his law is love. Yes. You guys with me on this? And then we are to convey it to the body of Christ and to the world. Let me say this, that there was once, let me lower this a little bit. There was once a time where we had to go up into the mountain to get the decree. But today God has made it possible that the mountain spiritually come to us so that we can receive the decree. In 10 years, we have served God through serving his people. You guys with me on this? By loving the community, which includes the world as well as the body. This ministry has done that. As a ministry, we have testimony of highways, byways, and the vineyard of spreading love to the body as well as to the world. We have done this in 10 years. We have done what Christ has decreed for us to do. That, saints, is our testimony. And that is the responsibility of conveying, implementing, and or carrying out the law, which is love. Amen. You guys with me? Therefore, what I want you guys to do is to turn with me to 1 Peter 4 and 7. 1 Peter 4 and 7. What I am learning here is for those of us who are truly in the body of Christ, that is his church. That's his church, right? Yes. All roads lead back to Peter in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. For those of us who are truly in the, body, in the body, that is his church. All roads lead back to Peter in the Bible. If you want wisdom, ask the church. That is revelation from God which is why we are called the church, then the books of Peter are to be books that should be read, ingested, and digested. Yeah. You with me? Peter is a powerful person. Why? Because Christ said that upon this rock, come on, somebody. Huh? That's powerful. It is. It is. That means that we're the rock. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is the cornerstone. Remember now, Peter represents the body of Christ and is symbolic of the church of Christ. Yes. And so should we be. Y'all with me on this? Yes. Let's go to 1 Peter 4. This is some good stuff. 1 Peter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 7. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Listen to this. Listen to what Christ has placed in Peter and what Peter's conveying to us. But, can y'all say but? But. Say it again. But. Say it like you mean it. But. My God. But the end of all things is at hand. Jesus. Jesus. You guys hear that? Yeah. The church is saying that the end of all things is at hand. Did Peter say the end? Did Christ say the end of some things? Yeah. Did he say the end of most things? He said the end of all things is at hand. That's a pretty powerful statement coming from God. You guys understand what I'm saying? Because all is not just you. Jesus. Look at what he says here. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Come on, somebody. And above all things, have fervent love. You can say fervent love. Fervent love for one another. 
For love will cover a multitude of sins. Yes. Oh yes. my God. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God, what's he telling us here? Glad you asked. We're going to chat about it. If anyone speaks, let him speak. Y'all say speak. speak. Say it again. Speak. Say it like you mean it. Speak. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Powerful. If anyone ministers, y'all say ministers. ministers, say it again, ministers. let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things, all things, God may be glorified through who? Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion. Can y'all say dominion? Dominion. Forever and ever. He said, in all things, that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys know it's not about you. It's about what's on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Because you have a full-grown Jesus. You have a full-grown Christ that's dwelling on the inside of you if you're truly the body of Christ. Amen. You guys realize that? Yeah. Yeah. This stuff is powerful. Yes, this is powerful yes, for us that's in the body of Christ, Ruth. Yes. As stated before, the books of Peter have some of the most poignant revelation of any of the 66 books that are contained in the Bible. Why? Because the books of Peter are for us. Yes. You guys stay with me here. This is important. Because Peter is symbolic and represents the church, yes. right? Yes. And the church is supposed to have ears to hear what thus the Lord is saying and uh, is supposed to have a personal relationship with God. Hmm? Yes. See, your relationship cannot be the same relationship as Clarence's relationship right. because Clarence is unique in his own right. And so is Deborah. She's unique in her own right. But when the two come together, Look, yes. your relationship is personal. Yes. Our relationship is personal. Yes. My relationship with you, Pastor uh, uh, Allen, is not the same relationship I have with Ruth. Yeah. You guys feel it? Yes. And my relationship with Sister Deidre is not the same relationship I have with Pastor Carol. Amen. You guys with me on this? Yes. In other words, look, look, look. In other words, God reveals himself to the church because he can trust the church. Remember we said that before. See, yeah. God don't reveal himself to anything or anyone that he cannot trust. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. So if God has given you revelation, feel honored and privileged because God trusts you. Yes. You guys with me on this? Yes. He can trust the church, that is his body, with his identity because God reveals his identity. You guys with me on this? Oh, yeah. yes. For the body's identity is taken from its head. Let me say that again. The body's identity is taken from its head. The question is, who's your head? You guys with me on this? See, that body you have, Pastor, takes order from the head that lays on top of it. Yeah. When that head on top of it says to that body, go right, go left, that body does what? It follows the directive or the decrees of that head. Yeah. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Christ is the head of the church. Yeah. He's the head of the body. Yeah. You guys with me on this? Yeah. In other words, the body don't identify the head. The head identifies the body. Y'all yeah. with me on this? Yeah. There's some of us walking around here in the body of Christ who thinks that we identify Christ. We don't. Christ identifies us. Yeah. 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 You guys with me on this? Yeah. The head gives the body identity, and the body supports the identity of the head. Yeah. You guys with me on this? Yeah. Then, if that is the case, then we are supporters. We support. We are the support. Why do you think that he says, upon this rock that will build my church? Because the rock is the support. Yeah. Easily. Y'all stay with me here. The church is not supposed to be about 
feelings mm -hmm. yeah. and or emotions. Let me say that again. The church is not supposed to be about feelings, Ruth, and or emotions. It's supposed to be about living him. <laughs> you guys understand that? It's about living him, which supersedes your feelings and or your emotions. You guys feeling me on this? Yeah. The feelings is that I may die. The emotion is I'm crying because I don't want to die. But the truth is I live. And I'm ready to go. You guys feeling that? Yes, yes. Look, 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 look. And that is the reason why we are called to be his instrument of worship. Let us check a chat about this one. Stay with me here yeah. and I'm going to be done. First, understand that in this case, an instrument, check this out, Pastor, an instrument is a person used by another person merely as a means to some private end. Let me say that again, because this is good. I said in this case, mm -hmm. hmm? see, in this case, when I say this case, y'all, I'm talking spiritually, right. Mm -hmm. right? Because this is spirit side chat. This is not natural side chat. All if you right. want natural side chat, change the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Got to go somewhere else. I'm not telling you how to live naturally in the spirit. I'm telling you how to live spiritually naturally. Right. It's the difference. Understand in this case, an instrument is a person used by another person. Remember when we talked about what a person is and who a person is? Precepts upon precepts. There's only three persons in all of existence, in all of the universe. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you have got to be connected to one of those persons in order to be identified as a person. Yeah. Who do you think that we're connected to? God the Son. Hmm? You are not a person if you're not in Christ Jesus because you're dead. Persons don't die. Oh, come on. You guys understand this? Look, therefore, this instrument is a person used by another person merely as a means to some private end. The instrument is a tool of another used for delicate and or precise work. You guys with me? See, the instrument has a job to do, Sister Deidre. And that job that the instrument does is to satisfy the one who owns the instrument. In other words, it has a delicate work to do. And that delicate work is because it has to be precise. Amen. My God. See, you just can't go cut in any old kind of way. It's a precision. The instrument, in other words, is a skilled surgeon that provides service as a means to a private end. Mm. So as an instrument, you are skilled. Yeah, yeah. You guys understand what I'm saying? And listen, to be skilled don't mean you have to go to school. Come on. Right. Jesus, Come Jesus. On, Jesus. To be skilled is to be skilled by the one who doles out the skills. You don't need a piece of paper to say that you're skilled as an instrument for what this person needs to use you for. Amen. See, that's the beauty of it. You guys with me? Amen. The end is private because it is only privy to those who subscribe to the one who owns the instrument. Oh, Jesus. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 now. Worship, Pastor Carolyn. Check this out. In this case, remember I say whenever I say in this case, yeah. we're talking spiritually. In this case, it's not dancing, singing, or songs of praise. Let me say that again. Worship is not dancing, singing, and songs of praise. Those are attributes that can be part of worship, right. but it is not worship in its entirety. Right. 
Some people think that that's worship in its entirety. All I have to go is go to church, flip up and down the aisle, praise God, and just dance like I done lost my natural born mind, and that's my worship. No, it's not. No, it's not. Notice that I said it can be part of worship, meaning that if you never dance, if you never sing, or participate in songs of praise does not mean that you are not worshiping God. You guys with me on this? There's some people that don't speak in tongues. Does not mean that you don't worship God. There's some people who don't sing. You know, I have a terrible voice. I try to sing, but my wife always says, uh 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 uh. <laughs> But that does not mean that I am not worshiping God. Worship, saints, that is true worship, is lifestyle. Let me say it again. It is, if you don't take anything else from this ministry, please take that lifestyle is your work. Only the things you do for Christ is going to last. That's the reason why it's personal, Clarence. That's the reason why Christ is looking at your personal work yeah. to determine whether you get in or not. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus. Worship. That is true worship. It's lifestyle. That is the choices we make, the decisions we make, and the way we choose to live our living on this earth. You guys with me on this? Yeah. That is worship. And look, 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 look. That is your work. God has given you one assignment, and that is to please him through faith. And this, that is instruments of worship, is what we need to be in order to get ready and to go and get them ready. Yes. And we're getting them ready to go home. Yes. yes. Now turn back with me to 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. Is this good, y'all? Yes, it is. But before we get started, please remember, especially in these scriptures, saints, that God's word is full of what? Symbolism and representation. Symbolism and representation. And if ever you're going to get the revelation out of it, you got to know the symbolism of it. You got to know the representation of it. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 8 reads like this out of the King, New King James Version. Quote, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, can y'all say therefore? Therefore. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Oh, my God. Note that God, through Peter, the church, is warning all of us and informing us that the end of all things is at hand. Christ is not saying some things, but he is telling us all things. Do you believe it? Or not. Amen. Because some people equate time, huh? They equate time with no ending. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm able to get up out of this facility and walk out to my car, get into my car, mm -hmm. drive home, or wherever I'm going to drive, does not mean that the end of all things is not at hand. That's right. Come on. That's right. You guys with me on this? All things is everything under creation. Let me say that again, Sister Deidre. This is important. Y'all got to get this. All things is everything under creation. And everything under creation is coming to an end. That's not just you, boo. Huh? Because it's not about us. Why? Because everything under creation has been tainted. Jesus, yes. Jesus. Can I say that again? Yes. Everything under creation, Pastor Lee, has been tainted. You guys have better learn precepts on top of precept. 
That is the reason for the resurrection. The resurrection was not just for you and for me, but it was for all of creation. Huh? Yes. Spiritually and naturally. Yeah. Well, actually, let me just say spiritually. Mm -hmm. Jesus was not only resurrected for us, but he was resurrected for all of creation. That is all of existence. Question that I have for you to ponder this, Ruth, is did death ever have dominion over Christ, the kingdom? Did death ever have dominion over Christ, which is the kingdom? Know that Christ is the kingdom. Turn with me to Romans 6, 9 to answer your question, to answer this question. Romans 6, 9 says this, and I'm reading it out of the New King James Version. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies what? Dies what? Dies what? No. Now Christ, saints, is the kingdom. So therefore, death was in the kingdom. Jesus. Look, 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 look. Having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death, it says here, no longer has dominion over him. You guys with this? You want to know why? You want to know why death reigned and had dominion? Because of Lucifer. There was still, see, this stuff happened, friends, happened way before we walked this earth. Yeah. See, God had an issue in the kingdom, yeah. which was called death. That's the reason why death was cast down. But it does not mean that death was uh, kicked out of the kingdom. The kingdom still belonged to God. The earth in all of its fullness was part of the kingdom, which was God's. That's the reason why he said, let there be life. Because he was taking back that which belongs to him. What you got to understand is the plan of God. Fire, fire supersedes us. We were used in the plan. In order for resurrection to take place. Jesus. That's the reason why. We have redemptive value. You guys with me on this? Know that Christ is the kingdom. And we are part of the kingdom. I'm talking spiritually y'all. People in the natural is not going to get this. They're scratching their heads. Saying what is he talking about? Read your Bible. Know that Christ is the kingdom and we are part of the kingdom. The key word here is part. You guys with me on this? Yeah. We're part. We're not the kingdom. We're part of it. Why do you think there will be a new heaven, a new Jerusalem, and a new earth? All will be included in the new resurrection except for death. And those who symbolizes death. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. There's another place for them that is not part of the kingdom. And after the judgment of Christ, there will be no more death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you won't even remember mm -hmm. that it even ever existed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hmm? That's how powerful this is. And that is the reason why we've got to connect and hook up with Christ. Yes. You guys understand what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be left behind with death. No. Come on now. Death is painful. You guys understand that? Mm, 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 mm. Therefore, we are called to be serious and watchful in our prayers meaning that we are to know what is happening in and around us. Yeah. Hmm? We, as his instruments of worship, are to be sincere, compassionate, thoughtful, and not trifling in our prayers. Yes, amen. You guys understand that? Prayer means a lot. Do not be trifling in your prayers. Christ through Peter is telling us, as the church, we are to be observant, alert, not found sleeping, and vigilant. I know the mic went out. I'm okay. They can hear me. 
meaning to know what's happening in and around us so we can know what to pray for. Yes. Hmm? Right. See, you just can't pray for your own universe mm -hmm. as instruments of Christ. Mm -hmm. You guys understand me? Yeah. That's okay. My battery went out. Oh. You can't. You can't do that, mm -hmm. right? You got to pray for things that are happening not only in the body of Christ but in the world itself. Why? Because what Christ wants to do, He wants to invite all who ever so will in, and you're the invitation to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what they see you do yeah. will inspire them. Let me say that again. What they see you what? Do. do. I didn't say say. What you wow. do will inspire them to want to be. Yeah. You guys with me on this? Yeah. Turn with me to Matthew 26. Please. I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. This stuff is powerful. <laughs> sharper than two, any two-edged what? Sword. Piercing what? Yes. Come on, wife. That's it. Meryl. Yes. Come on. I'm going to start here. 26 and 36. We have to be what? Observant, alert, and not found sleeping and vigilant. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. You see how God is setting us up for East yeah. for Resurrection yeah. Sunday? You see how he's doing this? I didn't even notice this until he took me here. Look, 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 look. And said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. He took with him who? Peter. Who is Peter symbolic of? So he took the body with him. You guys notice that? And he took with him two sons of Zebedee. I'm not going to get into all of that. But what I will tell you is that he took three with him because three is what? The number of perfection, which is meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He only needed three. Look, 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 look. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death, stay here and watch with me. Even to what? Death. Even to what? Death. Even to what? Death. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. But what I want to focus your attention on, because we'll get on that on East on uh, a Resurrection Sunday. I want to focus your attention on this. Then he came to the who? Disciples. To the who? Disciples. And found them what? I submit unto you that there are a lot in the body of Christ that are sleeping and trifling. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And he said to who? Peter. See, that's the reason why I said in the body, in the church, because he what? Questioned Peter. He didn't question the other two. He questioned the church because the church is who? The body. He says, he says here, he says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? You guys see what I'm saying? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray. Least you enter into what? Temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. That's the reason why you cannot depend on your flesh. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came back and found them asleep again. <laughs> See, but you got to understand, no matter what folks say to the church, mm -hmm. the church will always be found sleeping. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Even God himself had an issue with waking it up. Oh my God. Yeah. You guys with me on this? Oh my God. Stay here with me. 
And he came and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. What you got to understand is that Christ will allow you to do whatever you want to do. If you want to focus on the flesh, focus on the flesh. But realize that there's a penalty of the flesh. So he didn't say anything to him this time. He just went away for a third time to pray. Because what you got to understand here is that this dynamic of this push and pull, this cause and effect, this dynamic is all about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because he went and prayed how many times? Three, Three, Three times. times. This was about God Almighty, mm -hmm. and the church didn't realize it. But we got to realize it today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he left and went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? <laughs> Do you guys understand what's about to happen? Not that they were about to take him away, but about what's happening spiritually, yeah, yeah, yeah. about what's about to happen to all of existence mm -hmm. and creation. Mm -hmm. You're not real. And understand, Christ expects us to realize that. Why? Because we're part of him. In the beginning was the what? The word. And the word was with who? God. And the word was what? And you're part of what? Behold, the hour is at hand. What did he say? The hour is at hand. And the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. His betrayer is sin. Now, let me just say this to you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you have done, this lets you know that Christ, that God loves you unconditionally. Huh? He didn't put conditions on whether they were asleep or awake. He said, in the end, come with me. Yeah. That's the good news about it. Rise, let us be going. Let us be going. Jesus didn't say, y'all worth nothing. <laughs> and I'm not going, I, I can't, you know, I can't do this because, let me see, um, uh, uh, the Pharisees and all of them told me that if you're not with me, then you're against me. And you're not with me because you fell asleep on me. Jesus didn't say any of that. He said, rise and let us be going. Why? Because the betrayer is our betrayer. The enemy is our enemy. We've got to realize that. With everything that is happening around us, plagues, you guys with me? Wars, yes. rumors of wars, yes. viruses, poverty, neglect, mm -hmm. homelessness, mm -hmm. earthquakes, adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, lovers of self, bigotry, mm -hmm. racism, sexism, child pornography, pedophilia, sex trafficking, diseases, and the like. The only prayer we should be praying is for the return of Jesus, mm -hmm. the return of Christ. Because he's the only one that can turn it all around. Yes. Now, Christ through Peter is telling us that through all these things, until the end of them come, we are to have fervent love for one another. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus quotes himself. Christ quotes himself through Peter. He says, for love, and this is important, y'all. Stay with me, Sister Deidre. Stay with me. This is important. This is going to bless you. He says, for love covers a multitude of sins. Now, he gets that from Proverbs, what, 10, 12. You know, he talks about hate, but then he goes in there, but love, but love. Right, right. What a statement and a powerful quote that Jesus quoted of himself. Jesus. Now, fervent is to be on fire. It is to be hot with burning enthusiasm or a glowingness that is only intensified by the spirit of God. Y'all with me on this? Mm -hmm. That's fervent. Mm -hmm. See, that's loving unconditionally. You, you guys with me on this? Why are we to have burning enthusiasm through the spirit? 
because as the church, we know how this ends. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, you guys with me on this? Do you not know that there's some in the church, Clarence, that don't even speak about the end of times at all? Huh? And we're at that time? Yeah. We should have a burning desire to share this with others. Love is God, and the only and only God can cover a multitude of sins. Let me say that again. Love is God. You guys with me on this? Stay here with me. This is gonna bless you. And only God can cover a multitude of sins. That's the reason why sin was nailed to the cross. I'm sorry, that's the reason why love was nailed to the cross. Amen. Do you guys feel this? Yeah. yeah. As Pastor Carolyn says, I want you to picture Christ in your minds. I want you to picture him with a crown of thorns on his head and plastered against that cross. Picture it. Look, 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 look. look. When he was nailed to what represented? What did the cross represent? Hmm. Rhetorical question, but I'm gonna answer it for you. The cross represented sin. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Huh. Huh. Why does it re represent sin? Because it was dead. It was dead wood. You guys understand me? Yeah. This, Jesus, look, 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 look. The reason why love was nailed to the cross, when he was nailed to what represented sin, he covered it. Are you guys feeling me on this? He covered it. Yes, he did. Hmm? But get this. Not only did he cover it, hmm? for he is the head. He is what? The head. Say that I don't know it. The head. He is the head. But his body also Covered it. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's, you guys stay with me? You guys stay with me? Why do you think his wrists and his ankles were nailed to the cross and his head, which had a crown of thorns, was attached to it? The nailed body symbolized us. Mm, my God. Mm. Jesus. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. If you're calling yourself his body, Understand the representation and the symbolism of what he's telling you. Mm -hmm. What does he say? If you're going to follow me, pick up your what and do what? Please nail yourself to the cross. Mm, my God. Let your love cover your sin. Mm, oh, my Jesus, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And therefore, because of this, we are to love one another unconditionally and fervently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For we too cover a multitude of sin when we love. That's the reason why somebody tell you they can't do something. Love them anyway. Yeah. Love them anyway. Someone tells you that you're to be responsible to pay for something or to do something. Love them anyway, because God requires that of us. That's what set us apart from others in the body of Christ. You guys with me on this? Somebody is taking something more than what they should have taken. God bless you. Keep it. I love you regardless. And let me tell you guys something. That's supposed to permeate in your own families as well as in the church. Because your first ministry, Pastor Carolyn, is to who? First Peter 4, 9, 3, 11 says this, and I'm going to cut you loose. It says this, be hospitable to one another without what? Grumbling. Mm -hmm. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, whoo, Jesus, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things, y'all say all things? all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the what? Dominion forever 
and ever. Amen. How are we to be used as his instrument of worship? Well, he tells us through Peter that we are to be welcoming, generous, inviting, and warm to our who? Guests yes. and strangers. Mm -hmm. Hmm? And look, we are to be welcoming, generous, that is sharing our good or and our goods, mm -hmm. inviting and warm without any complaints. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What you do it for if you're going to complain about it? Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> because God is good and he is without complaint. What have you ever noticed God to bless you and to complain about it? Huh. <laughs> Has he ever blessed you and God says, you know, you're not deserving of a blessing and I really shouldn't have given it to you because, <laughs> but because I got this love thing going, I guess you can have it. If someone said that to you, would you want it? No. God is good and he is without complaint and we are to share him without complaint. Amen. Hmm? If you can't share, don't give it. Amen. If you can't complain, don't do it. Right. You guys with you with me? There's some things that I'm learning even with my own boys, that when I have to do something that I don't like what I have to do, generally, Brother Clarence, it's about money. <laughs> I go complaining. I give it to them because I love them, but I go complaining about it. And I got to stop that because I really didn't give it to him. Tell, tell it, Pastor. God gave it to him, and God will provide for me and provide all of my sources and resources. I've just got to trust him. So the car broke on me yesterday. Well, we just fix it. Without complaints. That's right. Got to do what we got to do. You guys understand what I'm saying? <laughs> the state owner. And that's without complaints. We've got to share him. And the number one people who's looking at us sharing him is who? Our children. Yes. yes. Our children. Now notice that each guest and stranger have received, and this is what the word says, a gift from God. Isn't that what I just read? Yeah. This also denotes that we also have a gift from God, but stay with me here. The key is we should know the gift, but they may not know the gift. Let me say that again. The key here is that we should know the gift, Brother Clarence, but they may not know the gift, Pastor Carolyn, and it's up to us to pull the gift out of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what Pastor Carolyn tells us all the time. You better pull that gift out of them. Pull it out of them, whether they're screaming and hollering, or whatever they're doing, but pull it. They may not come back again, but you got to pull it. <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but we got to pull it. But each one of us have a measure of faith, right? Romans 13 and 3. The gift is the gift of ministering. Ooh, let me say that again. The gift is the gift of of ministering, which comes in many different forms. Huh? Huh? See, the way you minister may not be the way I minister, but it's supposed to be the way God ministers. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That is the reason why Christ followed up the statement through Paul with, we are to minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Yeah. Meaning that ministering is an action word, right? To minister is to do. Y'all stay with me because this is this is the whole enchilada. A steward is one who manages another one's property. Yeah. yeah. Look, 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 again. Yeah. A steward is one who manages another's property. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the gift doesn't belong to us. Yeah. Can I say that again? That's the right. gift doesn't belong to us. To be good, saints, is to be godly. Hmm? Yeah. 
and manifold, remember the manifold of grace? Manifold is numerous. Manifold, again, is numerous. Different parts or elements, features, and forms, in this case, of grace. Hmm? See, grace is just not one thing. It's many different parts and elements. And that's the reason why when people say that grace is the Holy Spirit, oh, well, well, no, no, grace is time. God is gracious. No, it's many things that's involved in the spirit of God, meaning that we are to be godly managers of his property of grace. Because hmm? hmm? grace don't belong to us, but he has given it to us because he loves us. Yes. He wants us to manage it. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Grace is his and his alone, but he allows us to manage it. If we are, if we allow the helper to manage us, oh, Jesus, 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 that is to control us to be instruments of worship. Hmm? Yeah. Now, the oracles of God, and I'm almost done, y'all. I'm about to get you out of here. The oracles of God are the scriptures of God. Let me say that again. The oracles of God are the scriptures of God. Whenever you see oracles, always know it's the word. It's the word. In retrospect, the oracles of God is the son of God. Oh, Jesus, Stay with me here. But what is so profound about this script is that Christ through Peter tells us that ministering and speaking are two different things. Oh, Jesus. You guys feel it? Do you see that? Ministering. And speaking are two different things. One is motivational and the other is inspirational. One will motivate you to do while the other will inspire you to be. Mm. Ministering is to administer or apply. That is to perform the functions of what you are speaking. Hmm? Do I need to say that again? Yeah. Yeah. Ministering is to administer, minister is an action word, or apply, an action word, that is that is to perform. Um, so when you're ministering, you're performing, you're doing hmm, the functions of what you are speaking. It is to give service, care, or aid to those who are in need of it and those who desire it. Okay. Hmm? You guys with me on this? See? <laughs> okay, Holy Spirit. That's the reason for the dusting your feet off. But, 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 but I digress. It is to give service, care, or aid to those who are what? In need of it and for those who desire it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a desperation for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a person acting as an instrument of another. Speaking, in this case, authorizes one to conduct religious services. Y'all with me on this? Yeah. Notice, I said, or Christ says through me, religious services. For religious services have no relational service, value. They have no relational care or aid in them. I'm talking loud and saying nothing because I do nothing. But I pose judgment on you for not knowing what I speak. Mm. Huh. So. You guys understand that? Yeah. Hmm? If simply it is simply religious, religious without any revelation or without relation, have or has no value. Mm. So anything that is religious without mm. relations have no value. See, I can't minister to you for 20 years and then tell you that I can't do nothing for you. That's right. Can't help you. I can't sit up underneath a ministry for 50 years and then tell you I got nothing for you. Mm -hmm. You guys understand? Yes. Am I being nice? Yeah, yes. real nice. Yeah. Look, 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 look. 
Note that not all speakers are ministers. Jesus, Jesus. this is straight from Christ, y'all. It's not Ron Woodford, because I can't think of the stuff. All speakers are not ministers, mm -hmm. and not all ministers are speakers. Mm -hmm. That's right. You guys with me on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are some that are just doers of the word. Mm -hmm. Those are ministers. See, I'd rather for you to do for me mm -hmm. than to speak to me any day of the week. Mm -hmm. That's right. You guys understand that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you with me? Sure. See, 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 because it's the doing part mm -hmm. that's the inspirational piece. You can speak to me until I'm blue in the face. It may go in one ear and out the other. I was sitting in a training just the other day. <laughs> Young lady speaking a good game. And by right, if I was going to be there another year or two, I might have listened. Y'all getting me? Yes. Huh? Yes. But I didn't listen. It went in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't have a relationship with her. Right. And I'm about to pack my bags and go. <laughs> Understand now, if I'm in the same situation, Sister Francis, mm -hmm. and I'm still leaving, let's say in a matter of months, and I had a relationship with this person, y'all got, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm listening yeah. and I'm going to do. If it was Ruth up there, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm listening yeah. and I'm going to do. Yeah. But when you have no relationship and we're getting it back spiritually and you're just religious, you have no value. Look, 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 look. There are some that are just doers of the word and some that are just speakers of the word. Mm -hmm. However, the two coming together produces power. Hmm? It produced power. We must live what we speak. Let me say that again. We, because God is holding us accountable for this. Yes, Talking about getting them ready, getting ready and getting them ready. God is holding us accountable for this. We must live what we speak. And this is what gets us home. This is evident in the next statement received by Peter. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, because only God supplies the ability. The ability to do the work only comes from the ability which God supplies. Wow. Therefore, to minister is to do, which produces power, not to speak, but to do. God says be doers of his word. Yeah. That means that God says be ministers. Yeah. Administer the word. Yeah. Look, 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 look. But all speakers should be ministers mm -hmm. because we should not only speak, but we should always speak what we live. Mm -hmm. Therefore, therefore, to only be a speaker and not a doer will not get you home. Let me say it again. To be a speaker and not a minister will not get you home. It has no power. Being a speaker and a doer is our worship. And if we live the oracles of God, then we worship him in spirit and in truth. Make sense, y'all? Yeah. Jesus is the minister and we are his instruments. Can I break it down for you? Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, Jesus is the instrument of God while God is his minister. What did he say? Everything I do, I do for who? But my father. This denotes that our living is not for ourselves and the purpose of our living is not to have the things of this world, but the promises of God, which are yea and amen. Get ready and get them ready. How do I know this? By the next statement uttered, which is to arm ourselves also with the same mind meaning that we must arm ourselves with the same mind or the same soul of Christ, which belongs to him anyway. And this is what glorifies God through all things, through Jesus, who is the dominant force throughout all of existence. Stay with me here. Jesus, who is man and deity, and the man aspect of him has reclaimed 
our dominion, which was given to us and lost by us in the garden. Hmm? Therefore, Jesus has given the body, that is his body, back its dominion that was decreed by God in the garden. The decree was that we, that is man, have dominion over life. We lost that. Now we have it back. And this is what makes us his instruments used to take back that which was lost through deception and disobedience. And this dominion we give back to him. Let me say it again. This dominion we give back to him. You talk about casting crowns, you're casting your crowns now. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Who am I in Christ? His instrument of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For those of you who want to obtain the good news and to be an instrument of his of his worship because that's the only way we get home the first step would be to declare that Jesus is Lord and he is Savior. Second thing would be to believe and to declare that he died for your sins so that you may have life. A lot of people say that I'm living to live again. No, I'm living to have life. Life is much better than living. So I'm living not to live again. I'm living to have life. And that which is much more abundant with him. Amen. And then one must admit and believe that on the third day, God raised him. And when God raised him, he raised the kingdom from death. For those of you who believe this and want to be an instrument of his worship, please repeat this declaration after me. I want you to say, God, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life. And that you raised him to life. I trust him as my savior. I trust him as my savior. And will follow him as Lord. And will follow him as Lord. And follow him as Lord. And will follow him as Lord. And will follow him as Lord from this day forward. From this day forward. Guide my life. Guide my life. And help me, help me to do your will, Lord. To do your will, Lord. I pray this, I pray this in, the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have just you. made Thank that declaration you. and you meant it from the bottom and the top of your heart in yes. any place in the middle, I want you to know that the angels of heaven are rejoicing. Jesus has his arms stretched out wide for you to give you that beautiful, beautiful present hug. And I am overjoyed because there's another member in the body of Christ and the kingdom is expanding. The kingdom is expanding. To God be the glory. Thank well, I don't know about you guys, but Thank you, in the words of Pastor James Watson, mm -hmm. I think I just taught myself happy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you got this, you see you. Trust me. Thank you, Lord. I received. Thank you, Lord. Not just now, but over and over again, mm -hmm. as the Lord has placed this message and this teaching in my spirit. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory for what He is doing. Hallelujah. 
Father, we come before you thanking you, magnifying your name, glorifying you for what you have done, for what you are doing in our lives today. Because we know that this is a spiritual walk and our lives are spiritual now, not natural. So we thank you for your spirit, Father God which indwells on the inside of each and every one of us. We are your vessels. We are your instrument. And we are to be used for your worship. And we just thank you for trusting us to go out, to be the epistles that you have called us to be. Seen and read by all men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We magnify you. We thank praise God. you. We thank you. We pray all this in the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus. And through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let every heart say, Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. You're now in the hands of Pastor Allen. Amen. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you.